Hello and good evening. Welcome everyone. I'm so excited to have you joining me today. If we haven't met, my name is Dr. Pamela Frank and I absolutely love providing people with the support they need to help explore natural alternatives to amplify their health. I'm especially motivated to help you improve your health in order to achieve your family planning goals. If you have any questions during our time together, please feel free to post them in the comments and I will do my best to respond to them quickly. So preparing for pregnancy. Preparing for pregnancy can be a very exciting time, however it can also cause much undue stress. When trying to conceive, remember that everyone's biological clock is vastly different. Just because you know someone that may have conceived in a matter of months doesn't mean that is the case for everyone. Similarly, if you've heard of others experiencing complications, that also doesn't mean that would be relevant to your experience either. There are a number of tips for preparing your body and your mind for pregnancy. The healthier you are at the start, the better your chances of having a healthy and happy experience overall. First and foremost, it is important to properly manage your stress. Not only will establishing good stress relief routines help you during pregnancy, stress can actually prevent conception altogether. Stress hormones such as adrenaline, catecholamines, and cortisol inhibit the release of the body's sex hormone, GnRH, which results in suppressed ovulation in women, reduced sperm count in men, and lowers libido in both women and men. In short, the presence of these hormones inhibits fertility by signaling to the body that conditions are not ideal for conception. The solution of reducing the effects of these hormones is, of course, reducing your stress. First, you must examine the different stressors in your life and determine if any of them can be removed or lessened. For example, if you're experiencing stress within your work environment, you can begin to see what resources are available to address it or seek help from your employer if appropriate. Not all stressors can be eliminated, of course. The next best thing to do is change how you react to stress. While so many things in life are out of our control, how we choose to react to any given situation is 100% within our power. Starting a stress-reducing routine can help lessen the effects of stress on your health. Some habits you can implement daily that will help you minimize your stress include 1. Getting enough sleep 2. Having an enjoyable exercise routine 3. Reading for enjoyment 4. Practicing yoga 5. Beginning a meditation practice and 6. Journaling regularly Pick what works best for you and start your own stress-reducing routine today. As mentioned, chronic stress disrupts normal hormonal balance. This affects the health of the egg and sperm, as well as significantly decreasing libido. Fortunately, there are a number of herbs that can be taken to nourish the nervous system, support endocrine function, and reduce the negative effects of stress. Try some of the following for yourself with some expert guidance, of course. Ashwagandha root helps to regulate the thyroid and adrenal gland function. Bee pollen helps with immunity and fertility. Chamomile flowers act as a mild sedative, which may help to reduce stress, relax your nervous system, and induce a restful state in your body. Eleutherococcus strengthens the immune system and is a strong adaptogen, which helps your body to better adapt to stressful situations. Lemon balm leaf supports a healthy stress response, lessens depression, and reduces feelings of anxiety. Linden flower lowers anxiety, depression, and, and helps with sleep issues. And maca root nourishes the endocrine system. Before trying to conceive, you may want to talk to your doctor about genetic carrier testing. There are a number of diseases you or your partner could be carriers for, making it more likely to pass it on to your child. All that is required is a saliva or blood sample, and in most cases, it's even covered by health insurance. Some of the more common disorders screened for include cystic fibrosis, sickle cell disease, thalassemia, and Tay-Sachs disease but there are more than 100 others that can be tested for. Many conditions are rare, however, knowing what, if anything, you are dealing with can help you make the right steps when trying to conceive. A genetic counselor can discuss your results and reproductive options in greater detail.
not only can having a healthy BMI start your pregnancy off right, maintaining a healthy weight is also associated with having more success when you're trying to conceive. Having a low or high body mass index or BMI makes it more difficult for some women to become, become pregnant. Additionally, it can also contribute to complications with pregnancy or delivery. Your BMI is based on your weight and height and is used as a general estimate of body fat percentage. However, those that are extremely muscular may not get the most accurate result due to the measurement not accounting for muscle mass. BMI calculations typically use the metric system. However, here is a BMI equation with a conversion factor. You take your weight in pounds, divide it by, and this is in brackets, your height in inches times your height in your height in inches times your height in inches, and then once you've multiplied that, or your height in inches squared, uh, times 703 equals your BMI. There are lots of online BMI calculators, so it's so simple to just to find one of those, plug your numbers in, and it will do all the work for you. Uh, the BMI categories go as follows. 18.5 or below is considered underweight. When you're underweight, your body feels like there's not enough resources to maintain a pregnancy, and the priority will go to the organ systems that will keep you alive, like your heart and your lungs but your ovaries are not a priority to keep you alive, so they can be down-regulated when your BMI is too low. Uh, 18.5 and 20, between 18.5 and 24.9 is considered healthy. 25 to 29.9 is classified as overweight, and 30 and above is classified as obese. Following exercise routine will help you reduce stress and improve your BMI. A healthy exercise program includes 30 minutes or more of moderate exercise, such as walking or cycling, and weight training on most days of the week. If you aim for seven days a week and you fall a little short, you'll still end up with five or six. If you're new to exercise and have been out of touch for a bit, you'll want to ease into a routine. Start with something easy, like walking 10 to 20 minutes a day. Get in more steps by taking the stairs instead of the elevator or parking your car further away from your destination. Better yet, try to find something that you and your partner can do together. Working out can be more successful when you have someone who helps to motivate you. Even if you're looking to lose weight in order to help you with your fertility, you'll still want to avoid popular diet plans that eliminate certain foods or food groups. Low-carb diets, for example, can rob your body of many of the important vitamins and minerals and fiber that you need to sustain a healthy pregnancy. Here are some simple guidelines to include in your daily diet. One or two servings of whole low glycemic index grains, like quinoa, two cups of fruit, and two and a half cups of vegetables. Be sure to include a variety, such as dark green and orange and vitamin C rich fruits, as well as dried beans and legumes. Five to six ounces of lean protein from a variety of sources such as fish, beans, poultry, meat, pork, eggs, and nuts. And three or more servings of dairy or calcium rich foods. Smoking or excessive drinking, as I'm sure you already know, can be detrimental to your overall health. When looking to prepare for pregnancy, it is best to begin to consider quitting in particular. Many studies have shown that smoking can lead to miscarriage, premature birth, and low birth weight babies. Chronic cannabis use, for example, can lower sperm count. Research suggests that tobacco use, even secondhand smoke, can affect your fertility and lower sperm count. When it comes to alcohol, the influence on fertility is not well understood. However, research suggests that alcohol, specifically in excess, negatively influences both male and female reproductive systems. Stopping unhealthy habits such as smoking and drinking can be very difficult to break. Here are some tips to help you out. Nicotine replacement therapy can be used as a nicotine patch or nicotine gum. Experts recommend setting a quit date to give you time to set a plan rather than simply trying to go cold turkey. Enlist a therapist when quitting bad habits that prove to be more difficult than expected. Cravings are time limited, usually lasting five to 10 minutes. So reducing a craving is often a matter of finding something else to do to distract yourself for that time.
there's no doubt that environmental toxins negatively impact human health in a number of ways. That being said, it is clear that limiting toxic exposure can improve your overall health. Avoiding all the toxins in your environment is an impossible feat, but by limiting potential hazards, you can begin to improve both your health and your fertility. Ways to lower your toxin exposure can include avoiding synthetic fragrances, choosing BPA-free plastics, choosing chemical-free home and personal care products, tossing makeup products that contain parabens, sodium lauryl sulfate, and mercury. Let's take a deeper look. How much do you know about the ingredients in your body care products? Most body care products contain ingredients that mimic estrogen in your body and are known as endocrine disruptors. In other words, these components are directly responsible for hormone imbalances. Many fertility problems are linked to an overabundance of estrogen in the body. In women, excess estrogen is linked to early onset of puberty and menstruation at a young age. Endometriosis, uterine fibroids, ovarian cysts, PCOS, breast cancer, irregular menstrual cycles, endometrial hyperplasia, and low progesterone levels. For men, excess estrogen can equate to a hormonal imbalance with testosterone, low sperm count, and overall poor sperm health. Exposure to BPA has been linked to reduced egg quality, as well as several hormonal imbalances. BPA is a chemical used to make plastic hard and clear. It is used in many consumer products, such as reusable water bottles and food storage containers. It can also be found in epoxy resins, which forms a protective lining inside metal food and beverage cans. BPA has gained global attention as an environmental contaminant that impacts health owing to its widespread exposure and endocrine disrupting properties. Due to this increased awareness, it has become easier to recognize when products do not contain this dangerous chemical. Tips for avoiding BPA include, number one, stop drinking bottled water. Instead, opt for a stainless steel or glass water bottle. Avoid plastics made with BPA and certain types of plastics for food. Avoid heating food in plastic containers or with plastic wrap. Store food in containers made of glass, ceramic, or food-safe metal. Look for a BPA-free label on products and take inventory of how many ways you can begin to reduce your exposure. While limiting toxins completely isn't realistic, there are a number of leading culprits you can choose to avoid. You can start with the following known endocrine disruptors. Parabens are commonly found in deodorant, shampoo, soap, toothpaste, lipstick, and many other products. Phthalates are in most liquid body care products. Think lotion, liquid soap, perfume, hair products, etc. Phthalates have been linked to birth defects in the reproductive systems of boys. Low sperm motility in adult men has also been linked to this endocrine disruptor. 4-methylbenzaldiene, also known as 4-MBC, is used in sunscreen lotions and has been shown to be a harmful endocrine disruptor. Try opting for more natural sun protection when available. Triclosan is an antibacterial agent found in antibacterial soap, some toothpaste, and mouthwashes. This chemical has been linked to disruption of both male and female reproductive systems. Studies have suggested that it may even decrease sperm count. There are tons of supplements to choose from to improve or maintain the health of the female reproductive organs, hormones, and eggs. I've included a few important options here. Coenzyme Q10. CoQ10 can boost antioxidant power and mitochondrial function to improve the quality of eggs. 200 milligrams three times daily is recommended. Melatonin. Melatonin also boosts antioxidants to encourage healthy ovarian function and aids in sleep. Try three milligrams each evening. EPA and DHA. Fish oil can help produce higher quality eggs and help reproductive function in advanced maternal age. Take 1200 to 1500 milligrams of EPA and DHA daily. Folic acid. Taking 400 to one milligram of folic acid, 
400 micrograms to one milligram of folic acid a day for at least one month before you conceive and during your first trimester can cut your chances of having a baby with neural tube defects such as spina bifida by 50 to 70 percent. A prenatal multivitamin. Taking a prenatal multivitamin in the months leading up to conception can help prevent serious birth defects, preterm delivery, and help mom to mom to be stock up on some much needed nutrients for a healthy pregnancy. Do you take any supplements to support your reproductive health? If so, what are they? Diaspartic acid or DAA is a type of amino acid found in the testicles as well as in semen and sperm cells. Researchers believe that DAA supplements may increase levels of testosterone, the male sex hormone that plays an essential role in male fertility. There's also some evidence that oxidative stress may lead to infertility in men. Taking 1,000 milligrams of vitamin C twice a day can help to counteract some of these harmful effects and may improve semen quality. Vitamin D is another nutrient that may boost testosterone levels. Additionally, high levels of vitamin D are linked to greater sperm motility. Adequate zinc intake appears to be one of the cornerstones of male fertility. Low zinc levels and deficiency is associated with low testosterone levels, poor sperm quality, and an increased risk of male fertility, infertility. Additionally, tribulus terrestris is a medicinal herb frequently used to enhance male fertility and improve low sperm counts. Increased blood flow is important to fertility and egg health as blood is responsible for the delivery of oxygen-rich blood and nutrients to your ovaries. Healthy blood flow is also essential to delivering nutrients throughout the rest of your body as a whole. Blood also carries unneeded waste materials out of your body, creating a cleaner and healthier environment for fetal development. A number of techniques can be used to improve blood flow, including, but not limited to, staying hydrated, massage therapy, yoga, and acupuncture. Some yoga poses that are especially helpful include the lotus pose, child's pose, reclining hero, and seated forward bend. Knowing when you are most fertile or when you are ovulating will ensure a greater chance of getting pregnant. Simply start by tracking when your period starts and ends. This will help you determine the length of your cycle and help you notice any changes from month to month. The average cycle is 28 days, and really, I consider that optimal. 26 to 32 might be okay, but anything outside of that, I would consider that something might be a little bit off. And if we optimize that and get you back to 28 days, then the chances of fertility and healthy pregnancy improve. This is a good time to note, it, note irregular bleeding and spotting. The more details you have, the better off you'll be if you need to talk with a fertility specialist. Uh, down the road, or someone like me if you're trying to talk to a naturopathic doctor who, who has a special interest in fertility. There are various methods available to help track ovulation, such as an ovulation tracker apps that are available to download on your smart device. Ovulation predictor kits are also available at most drugstores that range in cost from $10 to $50. These kits determine when you're when your body is trying to ovulate by detecting a surge in a hormone called LH. Uh, it's considered to be fairly accurate, but it does only tell you that your body is attempting ovulation, not confirming whether or not you're successful. So it is entirely possible to attempt to ovulate and not be successful. So the predictor kits are, are an okay guide, but the basal body temperature or resting body temperature is actually even a better measurement. Um, see your dentist. It's, um, it's recommended to get your oral health up to date prior to conceiving. A number of factors, such as hormonal shifts, can make you more susceptible to gum disease during pregnancy. Higher levels of estrogen and progesterone in particular can have negative effects on your gums. Starting out with healthier gums gives you a step up on preventing negative conditions during pregnancy. It's important to consider that some procedures can be painful, but during pregnancy, you want to avoid taking medications. Knowing this, it's best to prepare and get your teeth taken care of before you get pregnant. Avoiding infections before and during pregnancy is important for good health as well. Many infections can develop and originate in your mouth and spread to other parts of your body. Your dentist can help put a stop to any festering issues. 
Acupuncture is a traditional Chinese medicine technique for improving the flow of energy throughout your body. The process of acupuncture identifies a number of energy channels called meridians, which connect to different organs of your body. Balancing energy within the fertility channels is the goal of acupuncture when trying to conceive. Acupuncture is a natural treatment that may alter brain chemistry by changing the release of hormones essential to your fertility. Typically, a naturopathic doctor who specializes in fertility will insert several very tiny needles into specific acupoints to increase blood flow to a desired part of your body. In the case of fertility, this would be the reproductive organs. If the needles don't scare you, if the needles scare you, don't worry. They are as thin as a strand of hair and many report they feel so relaxed during sessions they drift off to sleep. However, there are other options. Acupressure can also be performed. This targets the same acupoints without the use of the needles. Some studies suggest conception rates are improved by 40% with the use of acupuncture. Acupuncture can be used to boost fertility in both men and women. However, due to the makeup of female anatomy on the inside of the body, females typically respond better. Men can improve fertility effectively with supplementation alone. Eating a natural diet is the foundation for all health. One way to really pack in the extra nutrients needed is with a fertility smoothie. Important components to consider when designing your fertility smoothie include antioxidants, free radicals caused by factors such as toxins, stress, pesticides, and illness can damage DNA within the cells. Antioxidants, however, protect cells from free radical damage. Free radical damage can impact the health and integrity of the egg, the sperm, the cells of the uterus, ovaries, thyroid, pituitary, and nearly the entire body when vulnerable. The best way to boost antioxidant intake is by consuming a wide range of fruits and veggies, which can be difficult to pack into every meal. Smoothies are the perfect fix. Vitamins and minerals. Zinc, calcium, selenium, vitamin A, C, E, D, folic acid, iron are vital to fertility health. A deficiency in any of these nutrients can negatively impact your fertility. Again, smoothies offer the perfect option for boosting your intake of these important nutrients. Fiber. Fiber helps to regulate hormonal balance specifically related to fertility. Fiber helps remove excess hormones from your body and helps to balance blood sugar levels. Fortunately, the foods used in smoothies are usually rich in fiber. So let's get creative and start making smoothies as part of your daily routine. You can throw in some frozen berries, almond milk, oat milk, coconut milk, protein powder, maca root powder, some a handful of mixed greens, uh, royal jelly or bee pollen, and some omega-3s or coconut oil. If you have a favorite smoothie recipe, why don't you share it in the comments so everybody can enjoy it. So let's recap. I know we just went over a ton of stuff. When preparing for pregnancy, try to limit your stress as much as possible. Look into genetic carrier testing. Maintain a healthy body mass index. Exercise regularly, but not to excess. Implement a healthy diet. Limit your exposure to toxins. Boost your blood flow. Track your cycle, specifically ovulation. Try acupuncture. See your dentist have some daily fertility smoothies, and work with a qualified naturopathic doctor like myself on what herbal supplements are most appropriate for you. And not only that, but do what feels right for you. Thank you all for taking the time to experience this webinar today. I love helping people who want to improve their health. If you have any further questions, please post them below and or email me directly at pfranknd at forcesofnature.ca. That's P Frank and like Nancy, D like David, at forcesofnature.ca. Remember, I'm always here to support you. Thanks again. I really enjoyed our time together today. Please share with me in the comments uh, if there, what your number one takeaway was from this webinar. Also, if you feel like you need any additional support on this journey, I'm more than happy to help. I'm always here for you. Call me at 416-481-0222 
or email me directly at pfranknd at forcesofnature.ca. You can always visit my website at naturopathtoronto.ca.